Today, we have an open source large action model. So very similar to how the Rabbit R1 can control applications within the Android environment just by speaking natural language, we now have a completely open source version of that for the Windows environment released by Microsoft. So not only did Microsoft release a research paper outlining how they were able to achieve it, they also have an open source project which you can download and use right away and i'm going to show you that today so first let's go over the white paper this is called visualization of thought elicits spatial reasoning and large language models and essentially what this paper describes is a way to give large language models spatial reasoning. And if you're not familiar with what spatial reasoning means, it's basically just the ability to visualize the relationships in a 3D environment or even a 2D environment between different objects. And this is something that large language models have historically done really poorly. And the lead of Meta AI, Jan LeCun, has talked about this as being a core missing feature of large language models that will prevent us from reaching AGI. But in this paper, they show that it's actually possible to get spatial reasoning out of large language models. So let me give you an example of what spatial reasoning is. In your mind, think about this. You're standing at a point on the North Pole and you start walking and you walk 50 yards in one direction. Then you turn left and then you continue to walk indefinitely. Now think about this. If you continued walking, would you ever cross over that initial point? Now, you're doing all of this spatial reasoning in your head through what's called your mind's eye. Language isn't really involved when you're thinking through this problem. And that is what spatial reasoning is, and that is why Jan LeCun thinks spatial reasoning is not possible with language models alone. But according to this paper, it definitely is. So let me get into it. And remember, stick around to after this because I'm actually gonna show it to you in action in an open source project. So this is out of Microsoft Research. So in the beginning, it talks about how large language models are really great. However, their abilities in spatial reasoning, a crucial aspect of human cognition, remain relatively unexplored. Humans possess a remarkable ability to create mental images of unseen objects and actions through a process known as the mind's eye, enabling the imagination of the unseen world. Inspired by this cognitive capacity, we propose visualization of thought prompting. And I'm gonna show you why this will translate into a large action model. Because right now it's called visualization of thought, but if we take this technique and we apply it to a user interface, we can actually control that user interface and that's essentially what a large action model is. So let's look at this diagram. This is what is happening in the human mind. We have visuals, we have verbal language, we put it all together in what is called the mind's eye, and then we put together a mental image of whatever we're thinking about. Now, on the right side is what is the mind's eye of large language models. So really, we only have text, language, we put it all together, in what is the large language model's mind's eye, and then we come up with what is a mental image. So can we actually achieve that with a large language model? Well, let's find out. So here is conventional prompting. You have an input and then you get an output. And then we have more advanced prompting techniques like chain of thought. So it's an input and then walk me through thought by thought how you get to the output. And what we've found is when you use chain of thought prompting and other prompting techniques like reflection, you actually improve the performance of the large language model pretty greatly actually. Then we have visualization of thought. We have the input, and then we ask it to have a thought and to represent the visualization at each step along the way before we get to the output. And this is all theoretical. I'm gonna show you actual examples of it in a second. So humans can enhance their spatial awareness and inform decisions by creating mental images during the spatial reasoning process. Similarly, large language models can create internal mental images. We propose the visualization of thought prompting to elicit the mind's eye of LLMs for spatial reasoning. So spatial reasoning is super important in basically every aspect of life, whether you're driving, playing video games, playing chess, just walking, everything you're doing is using spatial awareness as long as you're interacting with your 3D world. So let's talk about visualization of thought. VOT prompting to elicit this ability, this being spatial awareness. This method augments LLMs with a visual spatial sketch pad to visualize their reasoning steps and inform subsequent steps. VOT adopts zero shot prompting instead of relying on few shot demonstrations or text to image visualization with clip. To evaluate the effectiveness of VOT and spatial reasoning, we selected three tasks that require spatial awareness in LLMs, including natural language navigation, visual navigation, and visual tiling. 
and I'll explain what all three of those things are. We designed 2D grid worlds using special characters as enriched input formats for the LLMs in visual navigation and visual tiling tasks. Now remember, large language models can't interpret graphs. Like if we were to put together a 2D tile and just pass it to the large language model, it wouldn't really understand it. We have to represent that 2D space with natural language and you'll see how they do it. So VOT prompting proposed in this paper consistently induces LLMs to visualize their reasoning steps and inform subsequent steps. And consequently, this approach achieves significant performance improvements on the corresponding tasks. So let's look at this. We have a bunch of 2D grids right here and they're of different sizes and they have different objects within them. So let's look at this K equals two. So the house is the starting point and the office is the ending point. And what we're gonna do is we're going to ask the large language model to navigate step-by-step step from the house to the office. It's easy for humans to do this, right? Go right, go right, go up, go up, and that's it. And obviously we can get more complicated, but it's still super easy. In fact, we don't really even need to go step by step. We can kind of just look at it and go all the way through just by thinking about it. But if we had to, we could describe it up, up, left, left, up, up, etc. But this is spatial awareness. This is spatial reasoning. And this is very difficult for large language models to date, but not anymore. So spatial reasoning refers to the ability to comprehend and reason about the spatial relationships among objects, their movements and interactions. And these can be applied in the context of technology to navigation, robotics, and autonomous driving. So here they say in this context, a square map is defined by a sequence of random walk instructions along corresponding objects denoted as, and then they actually just give the algorithm to denote the graph and the walking path. Then we have visual navigation. So visual navigation task presents a synthetic 2D grid world to LLM challenging it to navigate using visual cues. The model must generate navigation instructions to move in four directions, left, right, up, down, what we just talked about, to reach the destination from the starting point while avoiding obstacles. This involves two subtasks, route planning and next step prediction, requiring multi-hop spatial reasoning while the former is more complex. And here is the formulation of it. So it's represented by a formula rather than just passing in like an image of that 2D grid. Then we have visual tiling, and that is what we're seeing right here in these examples. And let me just talk about that for a second. Polyomino tiling is a classic spatial reasoning challenge. We extend this concept to test the LM's ability to comprehend, organize, and reason with shapes in a confined area. So essentially, you have a grid with different colors, different shapes, really, and you are tasked with finding a place for a new object. Now, if we just look at this, we can tell that within this grid right here, we can place this red four by one or one by four object right here, okay? So that is essentially what this test is accomplishing. Now, the really important part of VOT prompting is visualizing at each step. So it's kind of like chain of thought. We're not just saying, okay, do it all at once. It's, I wanna see a trace of the path step by step as you go along the way. So we introduce VOT prompting and it just starts really simply. Visualize the state after each reasoning step. This new paradigm for spatial reasoning aims to generate reasoning traces and visualizations in an interleaved manner. So let's look at the one on the left first. So this is visual navigation. We've already seen this. So we have the house right here and the LLM is supposed to navigate navigate through all of these empty squares. So the ones with gates in them cannot be navigated through all the way down to the office. And what we're seeing down here is the LLM doing that and doing it step by step. So step one, move right. Step two, move down. Step three, move left, move down, move left, move down and they reached it. Same with visual tiling. And what we're doing is we provide it with this grid and three different objects. So one by four, this is essentially Tetris objects. And we say, can you fit all of them into this grid? And so it says, okay, well, let's look at I, where does that go? Then let's look at L, where does that go? And then let's look at T, where does that go? And then it is able to accomplish that and get them all in there. And then here we have natural language navigation. So we describe a three by three grid and we tell it step by step what it needs to do and we're actually giving it the steps. And then at the end we say, okay, where are you? What did you find? And so we're visualizing each step 
and the one with stars on it is where the large language model thinks it is in the current state. So step two, it's W, step three, it's C, all the way up to step seven, S, and so on. And then finally, we're at C. And so they tested four different versions and they're using GPT-4. So first, GPT-4 with chain of thought. So let's think step by step. GPT-4 without visualization. So don't use visualization, the techniques that we're talking about today. Let's think step by step. Then GPT-4 with vision. So the ability to interpret what's in an image. Let's think step by step. And then GPT-4 with VOT. So visualize the state after each reasoning step. Now let's look at the performance. So as you can see, all the bold across the board is where it performed best. So first for route planning, we have the completing rate and we have GPT-4 with VOT as the best. Then we have the success rate far superior, nearly 50% greater than the second place GPT-4 without visualization. Next step prediction, visual tiling and natural language navigation. Across the board, VOT prompting technique just wins. It's really impressive. So does that mean that different prompting techniques actually affect the outcome? Well, yeah, I mean, that's obvious, right? So what it says here is in the setting GPT-4 COT chain of thought without explicit visualization prompts, it demonstrated noticeable tracking rate across almost all tasks except route planning. The fact implies that LLM innately exhibit this capability of visual state tracking when spatiotemporal simulation is necessary for reasoning. And in this figure, we're also seeing the difference between asking it to visualize and output the visualization at each step along the way versus just at least one step. So here's the complete tracking rate, which means it's visualizing at every single step. Route planning completely dominates for next step prediction, does a lot better, visual tiling, and so on, natural language. So this purple is GPT-4 with VOT. On the right side is partial tracking rate, which means at least one step had the visualization. And what we're seeing here is similar results, except for next step prediction, in which GPT-4 with COT, chain of thought, actually performs pretty darn well. So one last thing before I actually show you the examples. What are the limitations? So both mental images and visual state tracking rely on the emergent ability of advanced LLMs. Therefore, it might cause performance deterioration and less advanced language models or more challenging tasks. So here is the project. It's called Pi Win Assistant, and it's described as the first open source large action model generalist artificial narrow intelligence that controls completely human user interfaces only by using natural language. So they reference this paper. This is actually how I found the paper. And it uses the same techniques to control a Windows environment. So they give you this cute little character on the right and you can essentially task it with anything you want. So let's look at a few examples. All right, so what we're gonna be seeing is an example in the Windows environment. We have this little assistant right there and you can tell it to do different things. So the first thing we're gonna tell it or the first thing that the video tells it is to open Firefox. Open Firefox. Click on YouTube. Click on YouTube. So it's giving Click it a series YouTube. of things Clicking to do. Clicking onto the element without visioning context. Okay, so it clicked on YouTube. Okay, so let's take a look at actually what's happening. So you clicked on the assistant, you dragged me. So that's just the person dragging the little assistant around. Then we say open Firefox. So it responds with clicking on, click on YouTube, selected application, Mozilla Firefox. Then AI decision coordinates, it actually finds the coordinates. Then it says clicking on the search input and so on. So let's keep watching. So there we go. Type Rick roll. Type Rick roll. Click on search. Click on search, clicking onto the element without visioning context. Click on the second video. Okay, so we're just telling it what to do and it's able to do that. This is essentially open interpreter, but it works really, really well. Clicking onto the element without visioning context. And there we go. So it was able to do that. I'm going to mute it because I don't want to get copyright striked. And it's playing the video now. So it's just step by step telling it exactly what it needs to do. There it said to mute it. So it clicked on the mute button. Again, it has no training as to what is on the screen or how to click. It's figuring it out as it goes. And it's asking to visualize it at each step. So very impressive. All right, so let's look at this next example. By the way, this is an awesome background. So the user has given it the instruction, make a new post on Twitter 
saying hello world and a brief greeting explaining you're an artificial intelligence. And then here's the prompt. Here's another prompt. It is analyzing what to do, generating the test case. And then it actually, interestingly, iterates on the prompt automatically. And then it says current status. So that is where it's representing what it currently understands. It's basically the visualization at each step. So let's keep watching. So add space map, click on what is happening, okay? Then it generates the actions right here. So step, click on the browser address bar, enter twitter.com, wait for the Twitter homepage to load. So it's giving the entire set of actions it needs to accomplish. And it's gonna go through it step by step. So it's actually asking it to do the planning up front. Well, let's watch it. So selected element, locate the address bar. It shows the coordinates of the address bar, clicks on it, enters twitter.com. There we go. Okay, found the address bar right there, entered the tweet, and then hopefully they're gonna push post. But here we go, we can see every single step along the way. Very cool. So let's look at some of the cases. These are proven cases, working cases. So open a new tab with the song, click on the button, send a list of steps to make a joke about engineers whilst making it essay and so on and so forth. So it's actually a lot of really cool implementations of this. So I encourage you to check this out, read the research paper if you're interested. If you wanna see me do a full tutorial of PyWin Assistant, let me know in the comments, I'm happy to do that. If you enjoyed this video, please give a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. One.